Hey everyone, and welcome to this guide. Today I'm going to take you step by step and show you how to use the WebEx Teams eDiscovery feature. So this eDiscovery can be used for a variety of reasons, mainly if you want to generate a report for specific users or spaces and for eDiscovery purposes. So the first step to generate this is to go to the admin hub. You can reach this by uh, going to admin.webex.com. Beware, you need your compliance administrator credentials, otherwise you will not be able to perform this action. So once you're logged in, as you can see, I'm in my control Webex hub. And the first step is going to troubleshooting. Once you're in troubleshooting, you go to the tab status on the right hand side and staying on the right hand side under the tools tab you have the e-discovery search and extraction so we're going to click on view e-discovery as you can see we are now in the control hub for the e-discovery search and extraction this is where you will search and generate your compliance reports. Now, the first thing is to set the parameters. The first parameter is a required field and that is the email address. So, go ahead and fill in the e e email address you want to search. The next step is to set other parameters. So number one, you can set specific space names and you can set specific date ranges. I'm gonna set a very current date range. And call the report by report name. Now I'm gonna call it step-by-step e-discovery. -step e Voila, these are the steps, and we will click on search and generate report. Once that is done, it will automatically redirect you to the second tab on the right hand side, reports, which gives you a detailed list of all the reports that were done, have expired, completed, and still in procession. As you can see, our report is on its way, stage one of nine, and this will take about 10 to 15 minutes to generate. However, in the meantime, there's another step you must do. In order to actually download the report, we need an extra installation. On the tab next to report, we have the download manager. This is a WebEx eDiscovery download manager. So let's download and install that in order to be able to install or, or to download the reports. Once the download is finished, you will have to install it somewhere on your folder. Click on finish and voila, the WebXE Discovery Download Manager has been installed. Now let's go back to our report. As I said, you will be waiting about 10 to 15 minutes for the report to be generated. So we completed the report generation. Report has been generated step-by-step step e-discovery a few minutes ago. And now what can we do? We can delete the report, we don't want that edit or rerun the new report, but more importantly, you can download this report. As you see, it says install the eDiscovery Download Manager. We did that already. So let's click on Downloads. You'll have to open the eDiscovery Download Manager. You always want that. Now, before you can actually view the report, you'll have to enter your credentials again. I assume this is some kind of security. So let me go ahead and do that and put in the password. Following that, you get a few options. Firstly, 
the download location, where you can choose where to download the file, storage status, and then the download itself. The download itself is separated into two. Download of a summary report and a full report. I'm going to go ahead and download both and show you how they look like. So, we have an Excel file, which is a summary report, and a zip file for the full report. Let me go ahead and open the summary report. So, what is seen in the summary report? Well, number one, a list of space IDs where the user was active in. The space name of these IDs is next to it. If it is a one-to-one, -one, there will not be any space name. The classification, if it's public or private. The creation date, when it was created. So we have one in 2019 and one more recent. Activity, activity count, how many activities were done in that space during the time span that you filtered. Sending a message is counted as an activity. The file count, how many f files were sent in that space, as well as whiteboard and total files in bytes. Next, we can see if this is a one-to-one. -one. The first and last are spaces, and therefore that is false. The middle three are one-to-one. -one. Is it owned by an external organization? And the participant count, as you can see, the first one has 20 participants all the rest are one to one and the last one is four. And last is the participant display name. Each column has 250, a maximum of 250 names. And this can go all the way up to, well, a very high number, 6,000. So that is the summary report. Going over to the full summary, For this we will extract the zip file. And get a list of spaces. Again, spaces one to one is also considered a space. The space name will not come up. However, the space ID will come up. Firstly, I'm going to show you a one to one. All the actions performed by the users during that time frame is presented in an EML file, so an Outlook file. As you can see, we've got a list of actions. Clicking on one will give you the following information. Number one, who the sender was. That was me. The subject is who the two participants in that one-to-one -one are. And then you can actually see who was sent to and the actual message. So in this case, hello, is one EML file. Going over to the next EML file, is another chat that was sent. In this case, it's another text sent within the one-to-one. -one. If we go over to actual spaces, this is how it looked like. So, number one, we've got the sender again. The subject in this case would be the space name. The two would be all the members in the space. The content would be the content of the message. And then if there is something attached, you would see it as an attachment. I remind you that you can choose to generate a report without the attachments. That way, if you want to save space, you don't need to include the attachment in the report. Now, other actions are also coming up here. So, for example, in this case, excuse me, someone was added to the room. So, as you can see, the same structure is applied. Who was the one doing the action? Where? Who is in the space? And what was the action done? In this case, Bob was added into the space. That also comes under an action. So, just to give you a recap, how do you generate 
the e-discovery was in WebEx? Well, number one, you should log into the WebEx Control Hub with a compliance officer, go to troubleshooting, status, view e-discovery, that redirects you to the e-discovery search and extraction. Also here, you have a few steps. You search, it has to be based on an email address, and then you set parameters, space name, data range. You make sure to download the download manager. You generate a report, which takes about 10 minutes. You download a report, log in with your credentials, and then you have two types of reports. Number one is the summary report, which gives you really the summary of the actions, and then the actual report itself, which is viewable. Every space and one-to-one -one are different files. Every file has all the actions listed as EML files. Hope this was beneficial and keep well. I hope you enjoyed step-by-step -step guides of how to get your e-discovery data from WebEx Teams. Alternatively, if you want a more user-friendly and built-in capabilities e-discovery, you can get in contact with Agat software. Agat offers a variety of compliance solutions for WebEx Teams. One of them being an archive and e-discovery. You can archive all your data as you prefer and you're able to search your data. So here you can see how the database looks like, how the e-discovery looks like. So firstly, you get a list of all the communications that took place. Besides of that list, you get a lot more information. So for example, you can see here the exact session time a communication took place, the number of users, who the users were, what the session type was, in this case it was P2P, in this case it was a P2P chat, could also be a Teams, and on the right hand side you'll see the exact message. So in this case it's high. This way you don't have to go through the trouble of downloading all the data and searching through all the XLMS files. If a file was sent, you also get the file and you can download the file. On top of that, you're also able to do an advanced search. So if you need to get specific data from the communication, you can search from a lot of parameters, parameters being session time, users, but more importantly, the exact text. Once you search, you'll see exactly the data that you're looking for. If this is something of interest, you can go to our website at agatsoftware.com and ask for a free live demo. Fill in your company details and a representative will get in touch.